of the characters who have jobs in family rated films, 80% of the jobs are held by male characters. And you'll find almost no female characters in any kind of leadership position. We're trying to battle an unconscious bias against girls that is everywhere. It affects all of us. It's astounding to realize how deep it goes. When my daughter Alizé was maybe two, I mean, she'd watch Baby Einstein and things like that, but um, I decided, hey, maybe I can start showing her G-rated videos and uh, little kids' TV shows. And uh, the very first thing I put on was a, a kids' TV show. And I immediately noticed that there seemed to be far more male characters than female characters. When I was counting on my fingers, like, could this be possible in something that's made for the youngest, youngest kid? And especially in G and PG rated uh, videos. And I just started asking friends about it. No one had noticed until I pointed it out. And then they'd be, oh my God, oh my God, you're right the fictitious worlds that are being created for the littlest kids from the very beginning are nearly bereft of female presence. There's going to be some important lead character, an important female character, but the world is not populated with uh, a female presence so that whether it's, you know, a kingdom under seas or outer space colony or animals in the woods that, that talk, they're just not seeing female characters. I'm in the industry, I know everybody. Maybe I'll just bring this up uh, if I have a meeting with somebody. I would say, hey, have you ever noticed how few female characters there are in uh, G-rated movies? And every single person said, oh, no, 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 that's been fixed. And they were very sincere about it. There wasn't anybody who said, Ah, that's not a problem, it's been fixed, don't worry about it. They were like, we care about girls here, we work very hard at our studio, production company, whatever. Here's the proof, and they would often name a movie with one female character as proof. Movie after movie comes out that, that we want to say, well, now, now, now things have changed. But it doesn't, is because the powers that be are still saying, yeah, but I don't know, that might have just been a one-off. Want to step to the back of the car, please? I decided, well, maybe there's research about this. There wasn't any. Nobody had ever studied it before. It was recommended to us that we go see Dr. Stacy Smith at USC's Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. And we said we want to study G-rated films and, and kids' entertainment. And she said, why? Is there a problem with it? Which is what everybody assumed, right? And so, of course, she learned. Um, uh, the full extent and so we the very first thing we commissioned was uh, the largest study ever done on g-rated movies and on kids tv shows and it spanned from 1990 to 2005. now in all family film ratings turns out the numbers are pretty much the same that for every one female speaking character there are about three male characters for non-speaking characters like crowd scenes and group scenes in films, only 17% of the characters are female. And that's for live action and animated. Both genres end up with only 17% female characters, which is mind-blowing if you, if you think about it. Like how does that even happen? And uh, not just the quantity, but the quality is a, a huge problem. The female characters have far less ambitions. If they do have one, it's usually to find romance, hypersexualized and very narrowly stereotyped. Their, their jaws are on the floor. If we add women to Congress at the rate we have been, we'll achieve parity in 500 years. It's very strong, it's very powerful, and we have to get rid of this message that women are slightly less important. I know people believe it, but it's not true, this idea that uh, men won't watch women, but women won't watch anything, so we'll <laughs> design it all for men. When I talk about this, I often get corporations and global companies that say, please come talk to our employees about how this unconscious bias gets in there. Because I've never heard this. I didn't know about this. You might say, well, wait a minute, you're making it. How do you not know? But I think the same phenomenon happens to them as happens to all of us is, if that's what you see from a kid from the very beginning, if that's the ratio, that looks normal. So you don't notice that it's not normal. 
we don't realize the full extent of this unconscious bias. We know there are fewer women in elected office, we know there are fewer female CEOs, but it's getting better, right? And things are progressing. And we don't realize that it's utterly stagnated unconsciously. So how do you battle something when it's unconscious?